Hello and welcome back to my studio. I'm Gina and in today's video I'm going to be tackling something completely new and something that I've never tried before and that is actually painting up some miniature figurines or figures or mini figs or no that's actually Lego isn't it so anyway I'm going to be painting up these guys. I bought this project a long time ago for something completely different never got around to doing it and but now I've got a project that is fit perfectly into so I'm pretty excited to try something completely new I've done lots of research and lots of searching on YouTube for all sorts of different creators and ways to actually paint up minis so I'm keen to kind of put some of those those skills to, to the test and I'm really keen to share some of my learnings with you as I come out the other end of it. So these are going to fit really nicely into a new project and more about that in the next video but first of all we're going to create some of these figures that will go into the project so let's get started. So the first step is to assemble all of the models and so I just go through and cut them all out. I'm just going to cut them out individually and assemble them one by one just so that I don't lose sight of all of the parts because they're so tiny some of them and I just didn't want to accidentally put the wrong part on the wrong mini, um, wrong model. I'm going to call them models. That's what I'm going to call them. So they do have a lot of mold lines and as well as the little connectors into the frame that it comes in. So I'm just going through and very carefully, I know it doesn't quite look like it, but very carefully going through with the craft knife and just um, dulling down some of those lines. I could have probably done a better job when I get to painting. It definitely comes out there. And then I'm just going to use some super glue and just work my way through putting the model together making sure that the right foot is on the right side and the left foot is on the left side. That was, um, yeah, I did get it right, but it took a little bit of time just to work out because I was gluing them upside down just to make sure that they were on the right side. Anyway, we got there. So, yeah, one of the things that I do didn't do as I put the models together was I didn't actually fill in any of the gaps that naturally occur when the models um, come out of a mould. For the most part they actually connected together really nicely like that but this one here is actually a really nice seam and it just disappears but there were some that uh, in hindsight I probably could have gone back and filled them in. I think if I was going to do this sort of project again I'd definitely do that but it was just one lesson that I have taken away of many I assure you. So yeah I'm just going to work my way through put gluing them all together uh, and I'm just going to show you this one one little guy and uh, then just going to repeat the process for all of the rest of them. So the first step in the painting process is to actually block in the colour. So this is a flesh colour, it's actually just straight out of the tube in this colour, which I thought was really great, um, although I don't mind mixing up my own colours. This is actually a matte paint, so it's actually the first time I've used a matte uh, finish, which is which I actually really love, I think it's awesome. And I'm just blocking in the flesh colour on his face and hands, and then also blocking in black which is basically the two colors or the two main colors that this um, this model will actually have and then I'll go back a little bit later and highlight some of those details that he's got in his costume.
so here I'm just starting to put a very light dry brush so basically take, picking up a bit of paint onto the end of the paintbrush and basically wiping it all off again and just leaving a trace of paint left and then I'm just very lightly brushing it over the surface of the model just so that I can start to pick up some of those details in his costume. The colour that I'm using here is grey, so it's a very, very pale grey, and that seems to be working really well, so I'm pretty pleased with how this has turned out. Although when it dries, I did notice that it kind of dried a little bit more translucent or transparent, and so lost a little bit of the... Uh, finer details so I do go back over it with a with a white and it really starts to pick up um, a lot more of the details so I probably may have gone a little bit overboard on the dry brushing but this is the first time and I was really happy with the result So moving on to this little chap, he has a lot more colours in him, so I'm just going to start again with the lightest colours, I see I've already done the face and the hands, and I'm just going to start with his shirt which is going to be white, and I'm just going to go through and block out all of the colours, I'm not too going to worry too much about going over the edges at this stage, um, because there's going to be some darker colours that will cover up the white. So just starting with the lightest colour and then working my way through and blocking out the colours as they appear on the model. So yeah, I'm just sort of taking reference from the photos that uh, come on the box. I could have done something completely different, but I just sort of thought for the first time it would be good to have something to go by and sort of a bit of a reference photo. So that's basically what I've used here is just the reference on the box. So um, here you can see I'm just picking up a little bit of black and just painting through the... Um, the covers on the four on his forearms and then I'll also go through and do the same for his vest and his trousers as well. So with the white shirt, the I mean it looks white and I still want it to be white, but it's very much um, just quite flat and there's no definition in the folds of the fabric. So what I'm doing here is I'm just putting a wash over the white in a very, very light grey and I'm just allowing it to sort of rest into the folds of the shirt. And then once I'm um, happy with that, I'm just going to come back over with a paper towel and just tap the very edges of it so just trying to leave some of the paint that's sort of rested into the folds and then that actually just starts to bring it uh, a little bit more to life and give it a little bit more definition and a little bit more texture which is really cool.
So once I'm finished with the washes, um, both on his, the sleeves, I actually did his vest as well, so I did, did all of it, just sometimes when you repeat the process. I'm just going back through with a dry brush, so just the same as I did on the last model, and this actually really starts to bring the whole uh, model to life, so we're not only getting the definition of the dark patches in the grooves of the fabric, but also some light uh, with the highlights across the top of the fabric as well, which actually adds in some additional details. I do go back and just uh, take some of those white highlights off the sleeves, the front of his sleeves, just to bring them back to black. So moving on to the face, so this is teeny tiny and incredibly tricky, and one thing I did was just take a quite a simple approach and just painted the whites of the eyes as well as the pupil so just sort of made them reasonably large and then what I'm doing is just coming back over with that flesh color just to add in sort of the low eyelids and the top eyelids and I'm just tidying up some of the brow lines as well and that actually helps bring down the shape of the eye uh, so instead of trying to paint everything perfect really really tiny I just kind of paint it larger and then cover it back up again and then I'm just using a little pokey tool here just a really small tool just to kind of come back in a little bit of white a little bit of the dark just to try and get that looking really good so then moving on to this little this guy I've just mixed up a bit of blue and I'm just going to paint his whole suit exactly the same color he's got a three-piece suit on and we're just going to take exactly the same process as we've done in the previous um, in the previous models so this one's going to get the block of colour and then uh, a dry brush over the top and both the grey and then a little bit of white at the end. So yeah, let's, let's see how he comes together. So he's come together really well. I'm really pleased with how he's turned out overall. And now we're going to move on to another figurine. So this guy is like the policeman, I guess you could say. And what I've done is I've taken the same blue from the blue guy. I don't know what you call him. The guy with the three-piece suit. And I've just added in a bit of black just to kind of um, deepen up the blue. And then just going through and blocking out all the color. I'm going to take a little slightly different approach with this guy and using a slightly different technique which is called layering. So I've just put a base coat on there and then what I'm going to do is actually going to come back with a quite a bright blue and I'm just going to water that down and it's almost like a wash but it's not I'm not going to take it off. I'm just going to leave it on and just put a couple of layers of that over the top and then as the layers as I go through the layers I'm just going to just start highlighting some of those front edges. I'm not going to dry brush this um, figurine um, or I might just do a very very light dry brush. I really want the depth of the colour in the fabric and really keen to kind of just play around with a few techniques. This particular technique um, I think is absolutely awesome uh, but I'm going to need a lot more practice at it if I ever want to get good at it. So the others are pretty simple because I've used some of those techniques before, but I haven't really used this one before. Oh, there we go. I do put a nice little dry brush over the top, but it's a very, very light one 
as opposed to the others. So yeah, he's, I'm really pleased with how he's turned out as well. And um, I'll also be adding in some highlighted details of his buttons and his buckles just to really bring him, bring him to life, which is really cool. Um, I also paint the face in exactly the same way. I'm not going to repeat that because it's so tiny and it's very hard to see, but basically I do exactly the same thing for all of the figures um, into their in their faces and actually I don't know if you can quite see on the very front edge of his hat that looks like a bit of um, a bit of highlight it's actually as I've been holding the figure uh, the paints actually rubbed off the very front part of his of his hat there so definitely a lesson learned of not priming it beforehand um, I did um, make that decision very early on because I thought one, I didn't have any primer, and um, two, I knew that these figures would not be um, played with. They're going to go into a project where they will just be static, so I wasn't too worried about um, the paint rubbing off. It was They're never going to be um, handled in such a way. So that was definitely a lesson to take away, which I thought was incredibly interesting because I was thinking, eh, that's fine, it'll be all right. And then moving on to this little, little chap, uh, he's got a knitted vest, so I'm just um, putting a base coat on, uh, just on the vest there, and then I'm just going to go back over with a with a dark brown wash, just to bring out um, all of those details into that knitted vest, which I think works really well. And then we're just going to basically follow exactly the same process as we've done for the previous ones. Um, I'm just going to block in the colour of the suit, and then I'm going to put a wash over it, which is going to make it look quite dirty. But then by the time we kind of take back any of the excess, which makes a huge difference. And then also uh, the final step for this guy is actually doing a bit of a dry brush. So yeah, following all of the same processes, um, which actually work really well. And I'm really pleased with how these have all turned out. Well there you go, there you have it. I have now finished painting all five figurines and I've certainly learnt a lot of lessons along the way. So these models I know aren't going to be handled um, but I did find that the paint started to rub off the model so having primed it would have been definitely the way to go which is a step that I didn't do. So that's one lesson that I would um, take away from this and the other is that the craft paint, while it's okay, I can definitely see the benefit of having a much better quality paint for painting miniatures and especially this scale. So uh, if I'm going to do this more in the future, which I may do, I may not, um, but if I do to pick up another project, I'm definitely going to be investing in some better quality paint. But this was a great first round and I think the outcome was pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, the faces were a little bit tricky, but that's okay. I really hope that you've enjoyed this video and learnt things along the way with me. It's been a journey, that's for sure. If you have liked this video, consider hitting that like button. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to my channel. These uh, figurines are going to go into a, an up and coming project. So if you hit that bell notification, you'll get notified when the next video gets uploaded. So until next time, I will see you then. Bye.